What do you get when you marry a keyboard to a Pi? Displayed here is the Apple Magic Keyboard and the Raspberry Pi 4. So, the outcome will be... The Raspberry Pi 400. The Raspberry Pi 400 personal computer is an all-in-one keyboard and a Raspberry Pi 4 inside. Let's take a look at it. Well, on the box itself, is proud to show off the 64-bit processor, which is a quad-core and it's fully loaded with uh, wireless networking, dual display output, 4K playback, yada yada and all the stuff inside. We'll take a look at it when we unbox. And on the features part, well, this one is actually with a 1.8 GHz processor comparing to the old Raspberry Pi 4 which is only 1.5 GHz. However, all this can be overclocked. My Raspberry Pi 400 came with these noobs in the SD card. Well, it saved my time from burning a new OS myself, but you can do so if you have your own SD card. And I also got myself this original Raspberry Pi official USB-C power supply, which is rated at 15 watt at 5.1 volts and 3 ampere. So I realized that I can also use any of my third-party USB-C. However, I had some weird performance issue using third-party ones. To navigate around the interface, you will need a mouse. You can actually use any USB wired mouse or wireless mouse like this one. Optionally, you can also have USB webcam. Well, this is useful for online conferences or online schooling since these days with the pandemic, everyone is working from home. So make sure it's USB compatible and we'll need to set it up later. To display information, you need a HDMI monitor. You can use all types of HDMI enabled monitors. However, these Raspberry Pi touchscreen displays can't be used because it is lacking the ribbon. You will also need this micro HDMI to standard HDMI cable. This is the original one from Raspberry Pi. However, it is not included if you just get the keyboard alone. It is included in some of the bundles. Alright, let's open it up. So these two sides is just hold on by this extra piece of paper. Just slide them out, open it up and you will see just the keyboard inside and nothing else. Well, it's simple and environmentally friendly. Well, the keyboard feels nice. The plastic is as of good quality and you can see all the ports behind. And for the keyboard itself, it is a US layout 78 key keyboard, which is adequate and the thickness is just nice. Well, comparing to the Apple Magic Keyboard, the one I have here, you can realize that the size is almost identical. And let's put it together, you'll see that the spacebar is at the same size as well. The function keys on the Apple Magic Keyboard doubles as shortcuts, whereas on the Raspberry Pi it is thinner. And you have LED indicators too. And of course, for the bottom left, you'll see the control and the function key is following the Windows style, not the Apple style. Now, neatly behind the keyboard, we have all the connection ports, starting with a gigabit Ethernet port, which is a RJ45. Next to it, one USB 2.0 and two USB 3.0, and right beside it, a USB-C power connector and two HDMI output capable of 4K. And then you have your SD card slot and the 40-pin GPIO. The good thing is, you also have this Kensington lock. Well, below, there's nothing much except for some air vents, and Raspberry Pi 400. That's the external look. Let's go in depth and put it up. Just plug in the monitor and powering up the keyboard, you will get the booting screen. Of course, this is from the Noobs SD card. It might be different if you're using some other OS such as the Raspbian. Well, and just a few seconds, you get into the desktop. First things first, make sure that we are connected. So both the Wi-Fi and the wireless LAN is not connected. Well, I'm going to use Wi-Fi, so I just go ahead and select my wireless AP and get it connected. 
Once connected, go to Terminal and let's update the operating system by using sudo apt update. By doing that, it will connect itself to the servers and pull down the required updates. It's going to take a while, but it's not too long. And after this is done, let's do a full update of the softwares as well, just in case. We just do sudo apt full upgrade. And seems like nothing extra to be upgraded. So we are done. Now, what are the use cases of a Pi 400 all in one keyboard with a Raspberry Pi? Let's try out Minecraft Pi Edition. It loaded quite quickly and let's check out the graphic performance. Well, as usual, you'll be generating a new terrain and let's take a look around. Well, the gameplay is kind of smooth. Not bad comparing to the old Raspberry Pis that I'm using. But the last time I launched one of these was on a Pi 3. And wow, yep, it's kind of smooth. And let's see how far we can uh, look at the environment. So usually what I do is I will just, you know, place a wood block, you can use a sand block or something like that. And let's place a couple of it, like 20 of them at least, to go very high up and then we take a look around the environment. Okay, seems like the graphic is working quite well. And oops, okay, this is a, a builder's mode so you can build all kinds of stuff. And sorry Steve, I need to make you jump. So let's take a look at you from a third person's perspective. Spinning around coolly. And jump! Well, although this doesn't come with any GPU inside, but the Broadcom 64-bit ARM Cortex processor, which is an ARM version 8, running quad-core is actually quite sufficient uh, to do all these minor 3D graphics games. Well, for other usages, as usual, Raspberry Pi is perfect if you are doing you know, programming. Um, there's a lot of coding softwares pre-loaded inside here if you're using Scratch uh, or Arduino. And for productivity, you have your office suits inside. Uh, you can even use the Chromium internet to browse the internet. And of course, to set up Google uh, Classroom, uh, Teams, and also Google Meet. There's a video here by Cytron team uh, showing you how they set up Google Meet and also uh, running a conference with video on. Talking about video, let's go ahead and set up our USB camera. Fast forwarding me plugging in the USB camera. Now go to terminal and type sudo apt install fs webcam. So by doing this, it will automatically pull down the related drivers and set up your USB webcam. Okay, with that done, you can do a test to see if it's working by typing FS webcam and then put in a file name like image.jpg. By doing that, you will be capturing one frame from the webcam and you will be able to find image.jpg on the drive itself. Let's go open it up. Okay, locate the image.jpg file and here it is. Oh, well. <laughs> the image is a little bit dark because of my bright lighting at the back. Well, what do you expect? This is not a full HD super intelligent camera. Let's try it again with a different lighting settings. Let me put the spotlight over here and let's try it again. Alright, and now there you go. Now, this is uh, not too bad for a 640x480 resolution. And this is good enough for video conference and conference calls. Well, other than USB webcams, you can also plug in your USB game controller. Now, with this and my RetroPie setup, I can actually have uh, games from my old Nintendo system. Well, I have my favorite game, which is Dr. Mario. It is also very relevant today to this uh, pandemic because what do you do is you actually use the colored pills to kill off those colored viruses. I've been playing this game since I was like 11 years old and I love it very much till today. 
Well, those days I can do it like level 20 at the maximum speed, but today my reaction seems to be a bit slow. Well, you're not here to watch me play games, so let's move on. Oop, game over. Well, many people ask me if you can use uh, Microsoft Office on the Raspberry Pi 400. Well, the good news is with uh, Office 365 account, you can just log into the online web version and you can use Outlook, Word, Microsoft Excel, and even PowerPoint. And I really love to use all this because at least on a Microsoft Word, I'm familiar with all the tools that it's providing. And in PowerPoint as well, you can have things like your automatic slide masters and so on. Okay, so here's the short demo. Hope it helped. So now the million dollar question. What is the Pi 400 good for? Well, it is a computer, a very basic computer for people who wants to do like just normal web browsing, some writing, okay, using Microsoft Office or Microsoft uh, PowerPoint or even the built-in Office suit. Uh, a little bit of social media and probably learning coding. Like for example, here we have Scratch. Uh, you can also do microbit coding by using a make code which is available online or even the Arduino. Uh, which the API, sorry, sorry, the IDE is available on uh, Raspbian itself. But other than that, uh, if you are working on some prototype, for example, uh, if I'm building Home Assistant, which I'm using actually the Raspberry Pi 4, then I would make do with something without the keyboard. And because it, the 40 pin GPIO connector is also a little bit different, from the one from the previous Raspberry Pi 3 or 4 and it is also harder for you to pin out those pins. So other than that, I think, well, if you're just wanting another system to browse online videos, uh, to watch YouTube, um, you can go for the Pi 400. For me, this particular unit is used for students to connect directly to the TV to learn coding and uh, these are very useful for underserved schools and uh, I've been giving away a few of these units to schools and they use it for their coding education. Okay, hope this simple unbox and review video helped you in your choosing of Pi 400 or the Raspberry Pi 4. Well, hope you like this video. Do like, subscribe and comment below for me to improve on the upcoming videos and do let me know what else you'd like to see so that I can create these videos for you. Thank you very much and see you next time.